When tyrants take over, what's the first thing they do? Disarm. It happened in Russia, China, Germany, and most recently, Afghanistan. Why? Because disarmed people are easier to control. And over the last century and a half, American tyrants have been carrying out a slow, methodical disarmament that no one is talking about. State education. Tyrants know that education is warfare. Our rulers have a vested interest in making you totally harmless. They've got big plans and they don't want you getting in the way. Think about it. Would you rather fight an army decked out with high-powered rifles or a bunch of dinky water pistols? They know that if you can think critically, you're a threat. At New St. Andrews College, we want to graduate men and women who are dangerous. Dangerous to the world, dangerous to the principalities and powers, dangerous to spiritual wickedness in high places. Education can either arm you or disarm you. It can make you a threat or make you a useful idiot. <laughs> so, where you get that education counts. Click the link to apply to New St. Andrews College today. You can start the show now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I always wait for you. I'm ready for you to start the Thank show you. now. That's why I hit the button, because you said hit the button. And I do, which Gabe says to do. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Cross Politics on the Fight Lab Feast Network. Pastor Toby, Chuck Knox, me, and Pastor Doug back in the studio. Yeah. This is, is going to be an interesting show. Yeah. Very it's, interesting. It's always yeah. interesting. Backwards planning financial. Are you thinking differently about your family's finances and resources while others worry about surviving to the next paycheck? The hand of the diligent will rule while the sloth will be put to forced Ooh. labor. That's from Proverbs. <laughs> Train your mindset to see where God is moving, where to invest, where to build, so you can create, protect, and pass on wealth. What is your plan to use your economic power? Joe Garisi with Backwards Planning Financial coaches his clients i probably mispronounced your name joe i'm sorry uh coaches his clients to make this kind of impact on their world for generations by integrating investments debt insurance tax efficient strategies and legacy planning so go to backwards planning financial that's backwards planning financial dot n m dot com backwards planning financial dot n m dot com and connect with joe I love this guy. This Joe. guy's out of Florida. Good, good brother. Yeah. I want to talk to Joe. I need to talk to yeah. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Not just want. <laughs> We're really grateful to have with us Pastor Doug Wilson, um, as always. Um, but yes. there is something new, you, y'all. If you don't know who he is, you know what's wrong with you people. Um, Dougwills dot com is is the website to go to, the, and and the and the full bio and all the things he's started and all the books he's written. But. I don't know if you've updated your bio yet, but you are a great grandfather now. That's oh, right. I, I do need to update that. Yeah. Yes, I'm a great grandfather now. Yeah. So I mean, wow. so I mean, I think not that, just a pretty good grandfather. No, <laughs> a great, a really great grandfather. One. I, just, I just think that's a. I mean, that's like like that needs to be at the top of your bio now. Yeah. Wow, yeah, great grandfather. Um, pastor of Christ Church, uh, involved with Canon uh, Press and Canon Plus, and um, you grant you baptized your great grandbaby. I did. That's amazing. Wow. That's and great. you know what? Incredible. It was like As I was a pastor. I was As watching pastor, the whole thing yeah. and it was like it was like nothing was going on. I would have been like, all right, y'all, listen, let me tell y'all what we're doing today. My great grandbaby. And it was isn't, just like Isn't she cute? <laughs> and it was just like, all right, and we're just moving right along. Just, just, it was like, just, okay. Just regular. Just stuff. regular. Regular. Stuff. Regular. Yep. Um, so thanks for coming back on. Yes, yeah. as, as always. Um there's always something. Always something. Always something. And the latest something was you recently um, uh, posted on your blog, and you also sent out a letter to um, the church community here, uh, that Christ Church has hired um, a, a a defamation law firm, uh, right. Claire Locke. Claire Locke. Right. And, and so that's kind of making its rounds now. People are, you know, there's some noise and, and, and so on. And um, and and I think it's worth talking about. Um, yeah. so, I mean, Christ Church, you, me, I mean, all of us, um, uh, have it's been, Doug's fault, though. Have, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's all traced it. back to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, y- y'all, we've all been slandered for years. I mean, right. there's there's been hate sites and websites and slander and mud flinging, you know, for years. Mm-hmm. Why hire Claire Locke now? Now, so uh, Claire Locke is um, not only a defamation law firm, but it is one of the top, if not the top defamation law firm in the country. Yeah. So it's a it's a respectable outfit. Uh, they know what they're doing. They're very, 
Very competent. Yeah. So sounds um, pricey. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. The, the, you you should know if you've listened to the slanders that I own this part of the country. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 I've had to tell people that I own downtown. I own precisely my pickup truck and the books in my office. That's what I own yeah. downtown. Right. Um, but so they're they're very um, well respected, highly respected law firm. So we're not um, we're not just saber rattling with a, a local attorney sent a letter or something like right, that. Right, right. Um, so the, there's that. The, the, your question is, uh, why now? Uh, you're right that there have been uh, various randos and people uh, accusing us of various things. For like 25, 30 for, years. For a long time, yeah. yes. Uh, in in uh, the recent past, last couple of years, uh, it there uh, the – the bad guys have been gearing up in a more serious way. There was the Vice article. Okay. Then the uh, author of the Vice article wrote a book, Disobedient Women, that, and we have some chapters devoted to us in there. Okay. And then there was a recent Slate article. So uh, if the question is why, or why did we go to the next level, well, the slanderers went to the next level. Okay. So, so basically we've been all about proportionate response from the beginning, for most of this stuff, proportionate response means no response. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you, uh, you just you, the dogs bark, but the train keeps going. Right. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. So uh, that that has been our stance for a long time. And then when it gets noticeable at a certain level, you respond. So when uh, years ago, when the American conservative under Rod Dreher picked up. Uh, one of the yeah. local scandals, right. and he publicized it. Then you responded. I, I, I responded in like manner, and and the American conserv- conservative let me respond there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, uh, we believe in commensurate response. Okay. Um, we don't want to dignify slanders um, that are just out to lunch, and the guy is just, mm-hmm. you know, some guy in the subway yelling at people. Right. We we don't want to dignify that with. Uh, all sorts of response, but the the haters and the slanderers have been seeking to get organized, and it looks to us as though they're queuing up to be a little bit more serious, and so we just want to be commensurate in our response. So, but okay, so they've been lying about us, you know. They've been, you know, for lack of better words, per- persecuting us. Um, shouldn't shouldn't we turn the other cheek? Oh, when when it's appropriate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, so I, I'm going to point out here, this is a good place to point out, that I'm going to be unusually coy in this interview okay. yeah. um, because I'm not going to talk about any of the cases or any of Details the things. Stuff. I'm not going to talk about any of that. But I can talk about the big picture, right. uh, the big picture stuff um, and talk about the scriptures. The Apostle Paul uh, certainly knew how to just take, you know, he dragged out of the city and stoned, and he, he knew how to, get up and go on to the next city. He did that. Right. But he also knew how to use the system when it was appropriate. Appealing so to Caesar. so for, he appealed mm-hmm. to Caesar. He, um, he uses the fact that he's a Roman citizen. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, he does that in Philippi and he does that in Jerusalem. And in Philippi, he sort of goes to the wall. He, uh, th- he they were beaten and locked up in prison. Yep. There's an earthquake. He leads the jailer and his whole household to the Lord. Right. Then the magistrates in the morning say, let those guys go. And Paul says, nothing doing. I'm staying here in prison because they did this to Roman citizens without right. uh, a you trial know, or whatever. Without reading us our rights, basically. Right. Without yeah. we, we have certain rights as Roman citizen, as the, uh, the, he was a Roman citizen, and perhaps Silas was too. Uh, and he st- stayed there until the magistrates came down yeah. and escorted him out. And they were far more polite than they had been the previous right. day. Right. Because they knew that they had overstepped. Mm-hmm. Right, so uh, mm-hmm. so the, the Apostle Paul is not c- contradicting himself. You, it's like uh, this, this whole topic is like a game of golf. You play the ball as it lays. Mm-hmm. Right? Depending on certain circumstances, you do one thing. If the circumstances are different, you okay. do another. Right. So if, um, if, I, if I were handing out tracks on the street corner witnessing to people, and somebody came up and punched me, um, 
I have no business throwing the tracks to the sidewalk and mixing it up with him. Squirt Stop up. Yeah. <laughs> because he's he's attacking me because I'm a Christian, because yeah. I'm sharing the gospel. Right. That's a situation where you turn the other cheek, just the way I'm just the way that. Jesus um, yeah. instructed. Yeah. Right. But there are other uh, circumstances where you are uh, permitted and encouraged by the example of Scripture uh, to respond. So when Paul is on trial before the Sanhedrin uh, and someone orders him, he answered the high priest, and someone orders him to be struck, the high, high priest orders him to be struck, uh, and then Paul says, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Mm-hmm. You, do you, you're sitting in judgment on me uh, according to the law and in violation of the law. You order me to be struck. And then someone says, you talk that way to the high priest. This is an indication that Paul's affliction, his thorn in the flesh, was his eyesight. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, Couldn't see he, who was talking. He, yeah, he didn't see who, who the spokesman who was speaking there. Um, and he says in he's, he says in Galatians that they would have given their very eyes, they would have taken their eyes out and given them to him mm-hmm. uh, 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 because they loved him so much. And, and in one place he says, see with what a large hand I signed this letter. And, yeah, yeah. and so I, I take it that Paul's affliction was eyesight. But he says, uh, he challenges the high priest, and then someone says rebukes him, and he says, oh, I, I didn't know he's the high priest uh, because you should not speak ill of a ruler of your people. But that tells you that Paul's response was appropriate for somebody, or somebody, uh-huh. right? But and right. then he he walks it back, apologizes because it's a uh, person in authority. Because it was a per, because of it was the chair of the meeting. Yeah, but it wasn't wrong for Paul to speak that way in the meeting. Mm-hmm. It was wrong for him to speak that way to the ruler of the, his people. Yeah. So you you see, um, basically, uh, throughout Scripture, a willingness of God's people to be martyred. Stephen doesn't exhaust his appeal. You know, Stephen is just hauled out of the city and killed. Right. Um, but in other situations, uh, the the believers use the mechanisms that were available to them in the law. Right. Paul gives his defense before Felix. Paul gives his defense before Festus. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so right. there's no there's no problem at all using the uh, uh, the civil courts to do what the civil courts do. Right. So one of the other um, obvious questions that, and I've seen it raised on Twitter and, and elsewhere, is, oh, so now it's okay to take uh, people to court. Now it's okay to take um, to Bef- before pagan be- courts. between pagans. Yeah. So, yeah, we um, yeah. First Corinthians six. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust, not before the saints? Do you not know the saints will judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life, et cetera? Yeah. Um, how, how does and I, and and our community holds this actually quite strongly. Yes. Uh, and we teach this to our our folks. So how does hiring a law firm like Claire Locke in this situation um, comport with this? Right. So the first thing to do, and without getting into t- details, I'll just assure everyone that we have no intention of violating 1 Corinthians 6. Right. It's not like other people have to obey 1 Corinthians 6 yeah. when, right. when we're upset with them, but then we give ourselves a, a pass. Right. Uh, that's, not, that's not what's going on here. But a lot of people misunderstand 1 Corinthians 6 in the first place. Um, so, for example, Paul is not prohibiting the use of civil courts. He is he's saying two believers in the same church who have a business deal that goes south, let's say, that you know yeah. they they team up to partner to do something, uh, something goes wrong, and they don't remember the contract, or there wasn't a contract, or you know they right. don't remember it the same way, and they are in a dispute. Paul's uh, indignation is leveled at them for taking that dispute before unbelievers. Right. the The issue is two believers in a dispute going before unbelievers asking the unbelievers to tell the two believers what justice is. Mm-hmm. And and Paul is saying, we have no business right. asking the unbelievers to come into the church and settle a dispute between two believers. But let's say it's um, the year is 1680 and you're in England, right? Right. And the church, the, the country is a Christian country. The common law is Christian common law. Right. The judge is a Christian. Mm, what a day! Maybe, okay. maybe an elder in your church, even. <laughs> yeah, the judge. The right. judge is a Christian and an elder in your church, and uh, two believers 
get crossways. There's absolutely nothing wrong with two believers going into civil court. The issue is before unbelievers. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what Paul emphasizes there. Yeah. So uh, I would, if if uh, two believers were in a dispute, you'd want them to work it out privately if possible, um, and they might ask for pastoral help doing it. But the church should adjudicate business disputes rather than have it go before unbeliever uh, before unbelievers. Right. Um, rather but, be and rather be defrauded. Then and, get justice and, too. Yeah, and you should drop it and just eat it. If someone is someone, uh, let's say a fellow evangelical Christian in your town doesn't believe any of that mm-hmm. and wants to take you to court, yeah. uh, you should rather be defrauded than to let that happen. Right. Okay. But uh, like all of these things, there is a uh, there are a number of other factors. So there's a there's a difference between criminal law and civil law. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a criminal complaint, a tort complaint, and a business dispute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Civil you know, those those are differences in the law. Right. So if you see someone stealing your car and you're about to call the cops and then someone says, wait, I think that was Schwartz. First First Corinthians six. I think that was (laughs) Schwartz. I recognized him from church. Yeah. Uh stealing your car. You're not prohibited from calling the cops. Right. Because the guy who stole your car might have been a believer. It's a crime. That, it's a crime, right. and that's not what Paul's talking. About. That's right. not what Paul's talking about. Mm. Okay, so you want to make sure that you understand what the intention is, and you have to accept First Corinthians six as it is written, with all with teeth and all, right. mm-hmm. as such up to the point where you're willing to be defrauded, uh, rather than asking unbelievers to help believers. Uh, uh, sort out what justice is. But let's say you have a... Uh, oh, it, it, here's another way of um, people being fastidious. Let's say uh, uh, years ago, this was actually happened, where um, my father knew of a situation where a little kid ran through uh, someone's plate glass door and got cut. Yeah. And the family who owned the house were begging the family who had been injured to please file an insurance claim. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so we're, so that our insurance can cover it. Yeah, and the uh, person, the family, family of the child who was hurt wouldn't file an insurance claim because that would land you in. Uh, oh, they in, thought that was like going before right, unbelievers. Th- that was like going right. before unbelievers. Oh. Right. Or or an, another common problem, and this is something where you just you do everything you can to stay out of civil court. But when let's say your your husband just ditches you, right, and runs off with some Twinkie and goes and joins a big box evangelical church mm-hmm. down the road, yeah, right, and no and no no church and discipline. Not, no discipline happens and that sort of thing, and then he files for divorce, right? Are you allowed? Well, that's a that's a civil right. right. Are you allowed to be? Yeah, are defend you yourself. To, who gets uh, what? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So you do everything you can to stay out of. Uh, court under those circumstances. However, if you have, let's say, um, an uh, out-and-out pagan rips you off in a business deal, he's an out-and-out pagan. Mm-hmm. Your professor, he's he worships Thor, yeah. right? And you worship uh, the Father of Jesus Christ, right? And there's a hundred thousand dollar deal that he reneged on. He sold you a house that, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, is it is it a sin for a Christian to go to court over that? No, it's not a sin at all. It might not be a wise re- use of resources. You mm-hmm. might want to realize that okay, um, the cost. You you want to count the cost, the cost and right. do a, do a, uh, but it's not a, it, there'd be no sin at a, at all with a Christian being in court uh, with a non Christian. Yeah, and that and that is just a form of theft. There, I mean, like he he mm-hmm. th- that kind of you know sold you something that was completely shoddy or a house you know that fell right. down the next day or whatever. It's like he stole that from you. He stole it, but it's still a complaint that would, would be registered in the civil sphere. Yeah, right. But he's a non-believer and you're a believer. So yeah. the thing I would urge people to do is look, go through First Corinthians six, uh, uh, and look at carefully what it's saying, and recognize that. Uh, a lot of Christians will just blithely set it aside, and then yeah, he sits on the other side of the church, same sanctuary as me. Yeah, sure. We're at odds, and I'm going to ask Joe Pagan, the judge, 
right. yeah. to, to come in and and decide who owes who 500 bucks. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Pastor, you know, there's I got two questions here. One of them I ask you to speculate on. The other one, um, you know, I'll ask that one probably in a second here. But th- the first question is, uh, what you said that the our haters are leveling up. You know, what do you think your speculation here? What do you think they're leveling up for? Um, and after all these years, you know, when I got here, the first thing I got almost like I think I my first interaction with this was I tweeted something from you on Twitter. And boy, did I get the boatload of mail coming about Moscow. Was I was still in Georgia. Here, I hadn't Georgia. even moved up here yet. <laughs> yeah. And it was amazing because I wouldn't have read all those books had they not sent me. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, these are the problems I've been seeing and haven't been able to verbalize. Well, thank you guys. So they helped me get a better understanding of where you're coming from and to share your worldview. But we, like we said earlier, we've always had this, but why level up now? What's at stake now that's different than before? So the... I, I would argue the big thing, and and this, um, this is going to sound to some, and to especially to haters, like some form of self flattery. But it's not flattering at all to recognize what's going, what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. Um, in the la- over the last three years, I would say, because of the crisis that our country has been plunged into, mm-hmm. yeah. um, COVID, the locks- lockdowns, the masking, the voting. Vac- the vaccines, the elections, just yeah. all, all of that. We're in a period of turmoil. And we're in a period of turmoil in which many respected evangelical reformed leaders flaked. Mm-hmm. Right? The, um, they either went AWOL or they uh, compromised or the, the, the state said, your services are not essential. And then the Christian leader said, like, yeah, I guess you're right. They're not essential. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. the abortion clinic is the pot, yeah. the pot shop is, um, yeah. but we're not essential. Mm-hmm. And a lot of Christians were who were previously okay with things were okay, and they're just going along, and they got fed kind of out of the sermons and whatnot. Uh, there was a huge wake up call for a lot of Christians. Mm-hmm. The last three years has been, and so consequently, they have been willing to revisit a lot of their assumptions. And a lot of those assumptions had to do with why they were ignoring us all those years. Mm. So we've been we've been talking about these things for decades. Yep. We've been talking about if, if as Francis Schaeffer uh, uh, taught, if there is no absolute above the state, if the state's here and the absolute is here, if there is no absolute above above the state, the state is absolute. That's right. And that um, that is starkly, frighteningly true. And we are seeing that we are currently being ruled by people who recognize no th- no authority above them. Mm-hmm. You know? And all of a sudden, a lot of regular Christians, you might say middle-of-the-road Christians, evangelical Christians, have, um, they're not woke, but they did get, they, they are awake. They're, they're, <laughs> not, they're not woke, but they're awake. Yeah, yeah. And what happened then is they started paying a lot more attention to us. It was, it was a big promotion for us, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and there were a number of factors that went into it. Uh, Gabe's arrest was one of the things that went into it. And uh, the stuff that we were putting out during yeah. during COVID, and, the, and it was like a reassuring voice. There were a lot of people all over the country who were saying, oh, there's some Christian leaders who have not lost their minds, mm-hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and so consequently, they're paying a lot of attention. Well, I believe that w- the brand of Kyperian post mill Calvinism that that we are putting out in our distillery here yeah. mm-hmm. is really good stuff, and a lot of people are paying attention to it, and there are a lot of other people who don't want them to pay attention to right. it. Yeah. And so what they're doing is they're going they're going back into their arsenal and hauling out every. Uh, every yeah, dead, yeah, yeah, every yeah. dead cat they can find. Yeah. yeah. So they're throwing old boots at us, and dead cats, and ripened vegetables, and rotten eggs, and they're they're doing all this. They're they're not sound on the Trinity. They deny sola fide. <laughs> uh, they harbor they they harbor uh, sexual. What's pro- wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, every, <laughs> everything that they can think of, they're right. they're throwing, and I I would say, and Jesus teaches very explicitly when. When people, when everybody thinks you're doing great, beware when all men speak well of you, mm. right. he says. 
And he also says, when they slander you and despitefully use you and and right. say every manner of evil thing about you, he says, in that day, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Right. So I, I would argue that this flurry of recent activity attacking us mm -hmm. is the result of God's grace to us in giving us access to the microphone. So the microphone includes the CrossPolitik microphone, the Canon Plus microphone, the yeah. uh, Christkirk website microphone, mm -hmm. Your uh, blog. The, yeah. my blog, all of, those, all of those things. We have a nest of microphones here mm -hmm. that God is prospering. God, uh, and, yeah. and he's pouring out his blessing. And we don't take any credit for it. What do you have that you did not receive as a gift? Right. If right. it's a gift, then why talk it as though you did it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, God is prospering us. And there are many, many people who do not want that to continue to be the case. Can I? Uh, oh, you, no, have, you have another question. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I have two more now. Uh, no, but I've got yeah. one. But you, you, you go. There is. Um, oh, I don't know which one to pick from. Uh, me, 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 okay. Um, I, part of me wants to know. You know, in your assessment and the elders, and as you guys are thinking about this, what's at stake if you don't do this? One of the things. This is something I can say. It's just repeating what I said in my announcement letter. Yeah. Because of the increased reach and and um, blessing that God has given our ministry, there are a lot of people around the country in little startup churches, yep. um, okay. startup schools, classical schools, uh, classical oh, Christian wow. schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what happens is when anybody uh, when anybody tells someone, "We're starting a classical Christian school. We hope to start in the fall." And we we belong to ACCS. They get the packet. They get the packet. They, <laughs> they get the, the they packet get, they sent you. This packet they sent me. Yeah. yeah. They they get the treatment. Yeah. yeah. And it's one thing to get the treatment. When Logos School here has got six hundred plus students, and uh, the our our community here has roots that go deep. It's not like it leaves us entirely unaffected, but we're right. um, we can weather it. But if you're a startup school with 25 students, yeah, um, and you're you're thanking God for every one of the 25 <laughs> students, <laughs> yeah. and and three of them go wobbly because their aunt Millie sent them yeah. uh, uh, the link to a hate site, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that makes a difference to those people. So as I said in our letter announcement letter, the golden rule applies. Mm -hmm. um, we can't just take all the the goodness from this promotion that we've received mm -hmm. without taking on the responsibility mm. that it brings with it. We are responsible for people who get the treatment through their willingness to be associated with us. Yeah. Wow. So this is how we love our neighbor. Wow. This is how we with love our neighbor. The Podunk School and Classical School in Texas or right. yeah. The CREC startup. And, Speaking yeah. of small classical schools, you guys keep saying classical Christian school, oh, yeah. and, my like, ad, and my ad, ad is perfect. Keeps, and we the, do we the, do free classical Christian school yeah. ads. So, so this is, um, from, this, is yeah. a, this is an ad for Kenai uh, classical Christian classical school in uh, in Alaska, Kenai, yes. Alaska. Um, C.S. Lewis once said, "Courage is not simply one of the virtues, but the form of every virtue at its testing point." This resonates deeply with Kenai Classical, a pioneering classical Christian school on Alaska's remote. Kenai Peninsula. Mm. That's awesome. It's like a resort. Uh, uh, be, Probably not, though. Being <laughs> Alaska, bro. It's, it's the first ACCS school in the state. Wow. Wow. Kenai Classical has been shaping courageous Christ followers since 2019. Kenai Classical's current space, designed for 49 students, cannot accommodate the growing body of eager learners. This is where your generosity can become Crucial. Kenai Classical needs to raise $1.7 million for the renovation of an old warehouse building, Ooh. generously gifted to, to, to them as a future home. In a state with limited access to classical Christian education, this endeavor is monumental, but with faith in God's grace and the support of fellow believers, Kenai Classical can continue this pioneering mission. And so they're humbly inviting you to join them in this transform transformative journey. Find out more and make a donation at kenaiclassical.org slash give that's www.kenai kenai classical dot org backslash give kenai classical check it out that's awesome um uh, i kind of want to go over to iowa caucus but i i, 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 I got a couple more questions i, I got know, one question i know i got three more go ahead yeah, go yeah, ahead yeah, gabe, gabe. Is, it, is it my turn yeah go okay gabe. um just to, just to kind of push a little farther on the whole First Corinthians six thing, um, we're uh, so we've been lied about. We've been 
um, slandered for years. Now we're kind of getting a little more on the offensive. Um, but this could potentially re- result in us taking uh, – it was more than a church fight, but it includes a you know, kind of church fight because Christians are involved in slandering us too. Mm-hmm. Um, and But also like Slate and, you know um, – but that mix, we could potentially go before a pagan court and and still not violate First Corinthians six. Yeah, that's this is one of those areas where I'm going to be coy. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say, man, David was asking good questions. <laughs> <laughs> Message. I just want y'all to know I got Doug to be coy. <laughs> <laughs> that's scary. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um I, I wanna ask uh, a follow on uh, to what we've been talking about. Same topic, but um, I think uh, maybe another angle on this is that Christians um, often feel a certain nervousness about defending their name or their reputation. Right. And I think there's a good reason for that, because I think we 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 instinctively know I'm supposed to be humble. Well, doesn't the Bible uh, lean that direction, too? Well, and, I, I guess I, I, I'm not sure. Because okay. I, I mean, because I, I look at Proverbs and it says a, a, good, a good name, name. is to be valued mm-hmm. more than gold and, and mm-hmm. silver. Um Obviously, we're not to be puffed up. Uh, we're not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. Um, again, when you're persecuted, when you're mm-hmm. slandered, when you're lied about, rejoice and be glad. Uh-huh. Um, right. So, um, but at, at the same time, um, you know, rumors went around about the Apostle Paul. Right. Paul is the best example. Yeah. And, because, and he defended himself. And I, the way I parse this is when Paul is attacked for having a weak voice, let's say, his bodily presence is weak. Yeah. He says, okay, I'll take that. You know, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't get upset over anything personal yeah. toward or, him. Or petty. Right. But there are multiple instances where the attack on him is the avenue through which they are attacking the work of God. Right. Uh-huh. They're, they're they're attacking the ministry, they're attacking the work that is being done, and he is the point of attack. Mm-hmm. So when uh, he's attacked for how uh, how often he went to Jerusalem after his conversion. Right. Okay. Well, the the point of that attack was to make it look like he got his gospel at second hand. Right. Right. That was the point. So so he's not a real he's not a real apostle. Right. He's not or not a first tier apostle. You don't have to listen to him. And when that critique happens, he pulls out the boarding passes. You know, mm-hmm. he uh, in Galatians, he just lays out. Here's I went here. Right. Three years later, this right. is what ha- he. And they didn't add anything to me. Yeah. They gave he, me the right hand of fellowship, but I didn't get anything new from them. Right. He lays out his itinerary right. and defends himself. Right. Be- precisely because he's not defending himself. Right. So there was a, a great moment in Whitfield's life where someone talked about how the Wesleys were making a name for him th- themselves, and and Whitfield said, "Let the let the name of Whitfield perish." Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Right. Okay. That if people are attacking Doug Wilson because they don't like my sense of humor or they don't like, uh, you know, don't like the you. shape. Of my, <laughs> I mean, let's say, don't like let's you. Say that don't like the shape of my head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so let's say something like that. I should just take roll roll with it. That's not a big, big deal. Right. But I know that the if when I know and I know for good reason that the target is the ministry. The target is the 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 flock that I'm a shepherd for. Right. Okay. Uh, the shepherd has to know when it's a cloud passing over the flock. Right. That's that scared the flock, but it's just a cloud. Right. And when it's a wolf, mm-hmm. the shepherd has to know that one of the right. key qualifications for a shepherd, he has to, to know when to fight, when to move, when to reassure. No, yep. this is not a big deal. Right. Yeah, I, I always think of second Corinthians. I think of, all the letters of Paul, I think that, I mean, he does it in Galatians, but Second Corinthians in particular, he's defending his ministry in Corinth. And there have been a bunch of folks that have come in and said, Paul only, um, you know, Paul is not one of the original apostles. He doesn't have the right paperwork. Yeah, he right. only shows up to ask you for money. Right. <laughs> and then and then Paul proceeds in Second Corinthians to say, look, I don't need paperwork. You are my paperwork. Right. God's changed your lives. That's proof that I have a real gospel right. ministry. And, and, and then says... And and I'm not sorry for the last letter I wrote you. I know it was strong, but it it did what it needed to do. It created the kind of repentance that needed to happen. And how about that offering? Exactly, exactly and, right. That's and, exactly right. And he's not. He's, and, he's, and he says it's not because I want the money, but I want you. Yeah. And I, and I can't know that I have you 
unless I go ahead and follow through with asking for the very thing I had asked you for before. And so we want to be Bible people. And so we want to not care about our reputation where the Bible requires us to not care about our reputation. Right. And we want to go to the wall over reputation yeah. where the Bible gives us an example. That's helpful. Pastor, I, I got to ask you, you know, um, I've been here nine years now and I think about four years in right as a social justice movement started to really kind of pick up, um, you were just still doing your thing in your groove, like nothing had changed. And I started to realize like, oh, he's, he knows what's coming. <laughs> and then the whole sexual revolution thing started really taking off transgender stuff. And I started realizing that you were doing history conferences back in the early nineties uh, mm -hmm. on these topics in China. And so you saw the thing with slavery is going to be a, a, a point of leverage in the evangelical community, to get us to move. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, that's right. and so you were already hitting on these things. And so I'm sitting here thinking and listening to you and I'm saying, have we come to a whole new moment now in evangelicalism and, the, and what we're dealing with in the secular uh, uh, America where we're going to we're having to reposition for the fight a little bit? Yes. Yes. And, and so I guess I'm asking that to say, like, maybe other Christians <laughs> might want to pay attention as well. Like if you're going to engage this, they're going to lie about you. They're going to right. come after you and you better make sure you have something in your bag to deal with those things. That's right. So you can't stop them from slandering you, but you can do something to give you something to say when they do. Mm. Right. So um, there are a lot of Christians, uh, you know, uh, people say, well, you get accused of white supremacy because of what you wrote about the civil war. I say, yeah, but all these other people that I know, who didn't write a thing about the Civil War? <laughs> they're white supremacists. They're, they're white supremacists. Oh, white supremacists. <laughs> yeah. I'm the new face. We, just yesterday, just yesterday, we celebrated the, the uh, Martin Luther King Day, yeah. right. who is the king of the white supremacists. Oh, because uh, the doctrine yeah. that you should be judged by the content of your character and not by the color of your skin—that, in a nutshell, is white supremacy. Mm. I think it's. I don't think now. it's it is. now. now. Yeah. That's what yeah. white supremacy is now. Yeah. So I don't think it's too soon to talk about renaming all those boulevards. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, that's going to be taken. <laughs> well, no, we must. We must rename them because they're named after a white, white supremacist. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come right. on, people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> all right, Pastor. Let's get real Iowa. quick before we yeah. got to go. Uh, yeah. But uh, I know you got to run. Your take on the Iowa caucus last night. Well, anybody who was surprised by the Iowa caucus is someone who has been living in a bubble and believing all the stuff that the, the left and the media have been trying to make us believe. Mm -hmm. and, and so the issue is, I don't think it's personal affection for Trump. I think a lot of people in the middle are saying, whatever those guys want us to do, we're going to do the opposite. Mm. <laughs> um, Anybody who's trying to play the respectable middle, like yeah. I'm a responsible conservative, da 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 da, with Nikki Haley would be a, an example. I'm I'm an old guard kind of conservative. I'm a conservative out of the 80s, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. You can't tell us whether a man can become a woman. Yes, right. right? right. You you're not out of the 80s. Mm -hmm. I I think if I think if Ronald Reagan showed up again, a lot of people would say, oh, I really do like him. But if someone comes up comes out invoking the name of Reagan, but is going along with all of the transgressive new policies yeah. or is soft on them, then people have just had it. I th and I think that uh, even, even with um, uh, Trump's um, erratic, uh, he, he's as erratic as ever. Yep. Like he's going to build the FBI, shiny new headquarters. <laughs> As though, <laughs> as though that's what they need. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. if only yeah. they didn't have those dingy cubicles, they, they, <laughs> they wouldn't would have done. Right. They wouldn't have done all those mean things to me. Right. Uh, so Trump is a wild card, always yeah. has been, and mm -hmm. and I think people know that. Right. But they know that w whatever he is, transgressive, erratic, all yeah. of that, mm -hmm. he is an outsider, and all the insiders hate, hate him. him. Right. And that's what they're voting for. And they're, they're, they want. I want someone in the White House that every respected person in Washington hates. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I just want to point out really quickly, yeah. um, are you, I see you about to yeah, hear your not yet. Oh, no, yeah, I got yeah. like five minutes. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, well, um, you guys can ask additional questions, but I, I thought you were going to close the show, but I just wanted to mention to people, um, if you're watching or listening and you say, okay, so what are all the slanders, what are all the controversies, 
I think it's worth pointing out, um, Doug, you have a, a controversy library yes. on your website uh, as if you were prepared for this kind of conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's been out there for years. Doug, been, yeah. Dougwills.com. Right. Um, Doug, W-I-L-S.com. Um, click on uh, controversy library. It's the top, on the top menu bar on the about. Okay. Okay. Then one of the drop down items is controversy library. Yeah. And basically 90, 95% of the... Yeah. Uh, of the controversies right. have uh, detailed responses, right. um, elder minutes, uh, right. uh, resources. And that's one of the things I, I just think is <laughs> worth underlining is like, so, you know, one of the big, one of the big uh, accusations is that we are some kind of cult. Um, didn't you say one time we were accused of making our own toothbrushes or something? I ain't like seen that. no Kool Aid yet. Yeah. yeah, it was one of the weirdest ones. We were, we were accused yeah. of making our own toothbrushes. We got a lot of good bourbon, but you, you got no your Kool-Aid. homemade tooth- toothbrush. Anyways. Um, but you know, sometimes it's, it's the heading is cult, right? And then under you know heading of cult, then it's like you know they don't know what the Trinity is, they don't know, they don't believe yeah. in justification by faith alone, um, you know, and they protect abusers or w- right. w- all the rest of it. Um, and I think you know one of the biggest things that she just like puts that to bed completely, out to pasture completely, That's true. is the fact that like you can ask Pastor Doug, you can ask me, you can ask any of the pastors or elders on staff any question you want anytime. There's there's no big secrets, right? Um, it, like oh sorry, we like uh, all the way up until unless we have to you know protect the privacy of individuals in our in our church. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's just we've just answered, right? And, and it's public, and yeah. it's public information. Yeah. Like like you said, elder minutes. I mean, what kind of cult shares the elder minutes with the world? And one of the, one of the things we've done as we've had so many. Um, immigrants coming to moving to Moscow. Yep. We've had a lot of them. Mm-hmm. We've had to have periodic a welcome aboard new, yeah. new member <laughs> meetings yeah. updates and one of the part uh, one aspect of the agenda of these meetings is hey ask any you, question uh, ask any question you want no doubt before you moved here yeah. your concerned aunt took you aside and said do you know what you're doing because yeah. this and this right. no question is off limits right what do you want right. what do you want to hear right and and we get you know routine phone calls and emails from honest folks around the country sometimes you know maybe thinking about moving here or just I heard, you know, I saw something, and we take those, we yeah. take those questions. We're happy to answer them, um, but a whole bunch of them are there in the controversy library on your website, right, right. there for everybody to, to find. It's mm-hmm. very useful. There's recordings, um, there's audio files um, of interviews and so on. One of the most helpful ones that I'll just point to was an interview that Darren Doan did with you. Oh, um, in That's the right. last couple of years, was couple that years six ago. hours long? I think yeah. it's still um, it's amazing, um, and it's and it's um, on YouTube. You, if you search um, uh, "All My Friends Are Heretics," um, Darren Doan, Douglas Wilson, um, mm-hmm. there's like yeah, whatever, six episodes or something like this, mm-hmm. uh, where Darren kind of does his his thing and and asks kind of all the most awkward and angular questions that. Are yeah. asked often, correct? And um, you sit there on the couch and answer them. He's a great devil's advocate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and but um, it just a real helpful resource. And we got a lot of feedback after that one in particular. Same answers in many respects, but I think maybe the medium as being yeah. audio video, but also just maybe the direct uh, nature of those questions right. answered a lot. And we got a lot of feedback from people saying thank you, thank you. That was really helpful. Right. Um, and and some neat behind the scenes um, reconciliations too yeah. from yeah. from folks. Um, so, uh, anyways, just wanted people to know about those resources. If you say okay, why, what's what what are all the controversies you're talking about? What yeah. you can there look they at, are. They can go look to Doug's blog. Um, last thing, you got anything to say about that? No, uh, okay. that that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, You've only been coy once, by the way. <laughs> one time. No, just one time. I, I used it, the word coy. Uh, uh, okay. I was being coy uh, all the time. I see. <laughs> I see. <laughs> it made me nervous to ask him another question. <laughs> that was the goal, You should be. <laughs> you should be. Our uh, conference next year, uh, Prodigal America, mm. prodigalamerica.com. Which is named after a blog post that you wrote, yep. by the way. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Does America want to return to the Father? Yeah. And um, it's it's October 31st, which is Reformation Day through November 2nd in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, you're one of our speakers next year, Steve Days, uh, James White, who yes. will m- maybe have you go right after. We, I'm sure, we, I'm sure that. <laughs> George Grant. <laughs> George Grant will be there. Yeah. Um, if it, our, our subtitle for that conference is Where Does America Need to Repent? Um, right. So without much giving you time to think about this, um, where would – you maybe identify the heart of where America needs to repent. There are a bunch of sins that a lot every conservative evangelical Christian 
would would list abortion and per, rampant pornography and the transgender yeah. thing and Obergefell and all, all those are all sins. The central root sin is our secularism, and it's and it's a pernicious sin because it's the sin that we think is a virtue. So, mm. and even many Christians ne- think it's a virtue. Neutrality. Yeah, David French. They yeah, think okay. that yep. they, they think a neutral public square is even a possibility, and they think that they, they they object to what the leftists are doing by bringing their agenda into this neutral public square. No, it was never neutral. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it, it yeah. was never neutral, and so uh, we have to get clear on what on how heretical. The idea of secularism mm. is mm. the the public square can be um, uh, can be objective and not get into whether the Baptists or the Presbyterians are right. right, but but it's not possible not possible for a civil order to not get into whether the Hindus, Muslims, Christians, or Darwinists are right. You you can't be neutral there. Right, uh, you're gonna you're gonna govern. Either with the understanding that the citizens are made in the image of God, or you're not going to govern them. They're they're either going to be bits of protoplasm that you can shovel around the right. plantation as you please, or they're going to be created in the image of God, whose whose rights and dignity must be respected. That's not that you can't split the difference on that. Right, right. You can't have these rights that are derived from a creator. Right. According to our founding as our docu- founding document says. says yeah. That, right. Like that's. That by itself is not a neutral Correct. statement. Um, yeah. Statement. That's it's an a- evidence of white supremacy. Actually. <laughs> 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 Pastor Wilson, thank you so thank much you so for coming with us. Yeah. Appreciate it yeah. so much. Um, if you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids? And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until next time, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. It is the duty of the free man to resist tyranny at every turn. Every man will either watch his freedom stripped away or take action to protect what he loves. Introducing the A3, the newest revolutionary body armor from Armored Republic. The A3 is the new standard for lightweight multi-hit body armor. A3 plates are incredibly light at 4.6 pounds. The patented design captures fragmentation while remaining multi-hit capable. The A3 will stop up to M80 ball, yet comes in at only 0.7 inches thick. The A3 is the thinnest NIJ.06 compliant or certified composite standalone plate that includes the drop test. The A3 is the first of its kind, patent pending, that combines an alloy strike face with polyethylene backing, revolutionizing body armor technology by providing strength and durability while remaining sleek and maneuverable. The A3 is the new standard in lightweight body armor. The fight against tyranny just got stronger.